everyone, Cherise here. We're back with another Plan With Me video. August is approaching and that means it's time for a new monthly bullet journal setup. I'm really excited to walk you through my whole process because this setup is my favorite so far this year. So without further ado, let's jump into my August 2023 bullet journal setup. It's my second monthly setup in this Archer and Olive notebook. In case you missed the migration setup video that I posted last month, you can always watch it later on my channel. As usual, we will have painted illustrations, I'll be using watercolors and a bit of gouache later, and of course, feel free to use your favorite medium if you'd like to recreate them in your own bullet journal. My theme for August is bookstore. Since it's back to school season, the first place that I love to go to is a bookstore back when I was still studying. So for our cover spread, we will be painting a bookstore front. This will be a combination of the cover and monthly calendar. And the inspiration for this painting is a vintage type of bookstore selling old books. I wanted to go for a classic facade. So I looked up for images online. There is not only one reference photo for this. I just combined the elements that I like from the pictures that I gathered from Google. When thinking of vintage, the colors I could think of are browns, reds, and dark colors. So we started painting the cornice and the masonry piers on the opposite sides of the page with burnt sienna. If you don't have this color in your palette, you can mix red, yellow, and a bit of blue. And using this color, we're also painting the center that will be the base of the door later on, as well as the transom sash located above the door and the base panels. I'm using these building terms by the way because I don't know how else to describe what I'm painting or where I'm applying the colors. So if you're an architect or an engineer and I said them incorrectly, please bear with me. <laughs> I would move on to defining this part of the painting already since it dries up pretty quickly on this paper. But the whole sketch consists of many lines. Though I'm going for a simple and symmetrical design, I just want to make sure I paint each color in their respective parts correctly. So we'll proceed with painting the initial layer for the rest of the exterior before doing that. Next, we painted the windows with burnt umber mixed with a little bit of red to paint the grills. Just a very simple and basic window design. And then we painted the transom sash and a door with a raised panel style at the bottom using dark green. We then moved on to the signage and this is where our August title will be. We want to keep this simple and clear. We're using black and white for the colors and what I'm doing here is painting the background with black paint and obviously I'm giving myself a hard time trying to outline the letters but you can actually just paint the whole area with black and use an opaque white pen to write on top of it. My white acrylic paint pen that I like to use unfortunately dried up and I only have a white gel pen here but sometimes the whiteness or the opacity depends on how dark the surface is. So if you're using watercolor or brush pen, you may need to add a couple layers but since I'm just outlining them with paint, I'm only using the gel pen to cover the black marks inside the letters. Now that our initial layer for the exterior is done, we can now go back to add the extra layers and details. We are still using the same colors that we used earlier, but this time we're making them more pigmented and less water. Adding these extra layers has been a must for me when painting with watercolors because even if the paint we used for the base layer is already dark, the value can still change once they dry. If you notice, the colors dried up pretty light on paper and it's okay if we start out this way because it helps us decide how dark we want our painting to be. Just make sure that the previous layer has dried up completely before adding another. Otherwise, we might ruin the paper. We're mostly just adding the shadows and fine lines to give more dimension to the painting. I'm also trying to keep my hand steady to create these lines as straight as possible, but sometimes I forget that I'm painting and not sketching, where I tend to move my hand so much that I create unnecessary strokes. 
and also when I felt like rushing when I'm filming but it can still be taken into advantage especially if you really find it hard to paint a straight line in one go but you'll have to move really slow okay we have some white spaces left here we're gonna paint things that can be seen inside the bookstore on top of the windows we're painting two pendant lights we're using a mix of paints gray and black for the triangular shades and yellow for the bulbs. Then at the back of the windows are books that are displayed. We're just painting basic shapes here with various colors and we don't really need to be precise with the book cover designs. After that, we can add the shadows in the background with black but around the lights, I decided to add some glow using a light consistency of the same yellow paint that we can blend toward the corners. We'll just draw fine lines around the bulb to separate it from the glow. We're also painting the shadows around the books and some visible bookshelves behind. When I was editing the video, I feel like I could have made them even darker so that the books pop more nicely. It can feel scary because it's black and I can't undo it if I did. I also taught myself to stop when I need to stop, but anyway, it doesn't look bad at all at this point. We made the inside of the transom and the center fully lit up and then on the door we painted glows on the top corners. We have the open sign that we usually see in a store by painting a small rectangle using the same dark green. Then we'll just paint the rest of the area with black shadows. Alright, we're not forgetting this little space here. I thought it would be nice to have a flowering plant here on the front. We're painting this large box shaped planter with paints gray and since watercolors can't show up nicely on top of a watercolor painted background, we're going to use gouache instead. Unlike watercolors where we start with a light base, painting with gouache is the other way around. So we start with the greenery using a darker shade of green and then add the second layer with lighter or brighter green. The same step goes with the flowers. And I'm sorry I'm not able to press record on this part, but there will be another one later, so you will see how I did it. <laughs> the final touches will be using this white gel pen to add more highlights to our painting. So we're just drawing lines and strokes where the light hits. And we're also doing some small lettering on the glass part of the door saying old books and prints. Below is antiquarian bought and sold in smaller size. Adding the shadows as well using a black brush pen and lastly are the highlights on the glass window panes. And that's finally on this part of the cover spread but on the other side will be my monthly calendar. I thought it would be nice to extend the illustration all the way here. I know the idea is so extra, but let's get on it and paint the other side of the bookstore. We're doing a window style layout for the calendar itself, starting with painting the grills with brown again. We will have six columns combining the weekends and five rows. We're using light yellow for the background since I want to write with my black pen instead of using a white pen on the black shadows like we did on the other side. There is a signboard on top too with black and white colors. I've seen bookstores with numbers on both sides of the signage, but I'm not sure what it means or if it's the number of the street. But we're adding number 8 here for August and in the book's title. Then we will paint the areas outside with burnt sienna as well. There will be a cornice and base panel elements here too. A lantern fixed on the wall on the upper left side and another flowering plant below.
as promised, here is the properly recorded process of it. So we're using gouache for this starting with dark leaves by just doing small messy strokes. I also decided to add a shrub on the same pot just to fill the space above it. Then layer the dark leaves with a brighter green paint by adding yellow and white to the mix. And I actually added another one with even more brighter shade. We're painting the shadows behind the shrub with a pigmented burnt sienna and then the pink flowers with dark and light layers respectively. Something else felt missing in the composition so I thought of adding more greenery on top of the structure. So we're painting three like hanging plants or vines on both sides and on the center to give up some balance. Likewise, we start with dark green, a middle shade, and a lighter shade. And here I decided to paint them loosely. And lastly is of course our white gel pen for the highlights. It might be confusing why the title on the signage is just books, but I meant writing in the books which is a colloquial expression often referring to an event or a task that has been accomplished and recorded. It's just cool that we can still use the word books in this layout instead of writing calendar as the title. Alright, that's it for my August cover and calendar bookstore front inspired spread. The end result might be intimidating to paint but I hope the steps earlier was helpful to you. In case you feel like the speed is too fast, a tip would be adjusting the playback speed in the video settings into a slower rate. I always find that useful. You're welcome. <laughs> but onto our next spread is a crazy idea, at least for me. It's going to be an interactive one, so I got a couple blank pages from my previous bullet journals. We're going to attach this later, but now we'll keep it in place by taping it using washi tapes. We're painting a huge bookcase here, but don't worry, we're gonna do pretty much the same technique. So starting with the top and sides of the bookcase with burnt sienna. It's nice that I have this color already on my watercolor set, but if you have to mix to get this color, I suggest making a lot on your palette so that you have them ready and don't run out easily, especially if you have an illustration as big as mine. <laughs> Bookstores have these sections for different genres and they usually have them labeled on top of the bookcases. So that is our layout here. This will be divided into two sections, one for my monthly plans and the other for my habit trackers. We're painting the background with dark brown this time for a bit of variation. Then we're painting three layers of shelves with green and the fun part is painting the books. So we're just painting a bunch of book spines and some covers displayed forward. We can play around with different colors here so you don't need a specific color palette. And paint them with these basic rectangular shapes with different sizes or heights. Some are also slanted to make it look interesting. It's okay if they look flat in this base layer because we will add some design and scribbles later on. But we'll work on the shadows behind using a mix of green and black and defining the corners and edges further by adding a bit more black to the mix. I'm glad I tried to apply more black to the areas between the books because it helped them show up better. At this point, I thought of going back to the cover spread to add more black shadows on the book display, but I eventually forgot about it. <laughs> Our painting is slowly coming together so we're just adding the shadows and the rest of the details to the books. You might be wondering how this layout works having the pages painted entirely. But before I show you that, let's move on to the empty space on the left. 
We're painting another pendant light and we're using the same paints gray color for the shade and the cord and yellow for the bulb. We will also have a little frame below. I'll be writing something inside but we will continue with painting some more wooden shelves under it. This is going to be like another place to display some books. On a separate paper, I pre-made cards for my focus, goals, and videos for my monthly plans and the individual habit trackers with mini calendars. So each of them has a book spine where I wrote the labels and I matched it with the book spine that is on the page itself. Before painting, I measured the writing spaces and each card has to have book spine with 8 dot spaces in height. Now here is where the interactive element comes. The idea is like taking a book out of the shelf. So we will cut the area in between the books where we're going to insert these. I also cut small spaces horizontally on the top and bottom so the cards won't go all the way in and the book spines will act like a stopper. For the left side, I printed out some book covers. Likewise, they have some allowance on the bottom for easy insert. Alright, it's time to attach them on the notebook pages. I'm using a double-sided tape since the adhesion is really strong and we'll just carefully attach them to the page because it is so strong that making it align well is nerve-wracking <laughs> unlike using a glue tape where you can peel it off again. We are also painting the gap in between because it looks weird. <laughs> On this small frame, I'm writing pick what you need so the purpose of these book covers is for some affirmations and motivational scriptures that will be written at the back. I haven't written any at this point of filming but I will do it later. Now we can insert our planning, habit trackers, and affirmation cards. And that's finally my ambitious interactive spread yet in my entire artistic bullet journal journey. It was quite an idea, but I hope you enjoyed it. We now moved on to set up my weekly spreads for August. I already cut some Dutch doors here to save some time. I've been cutting pages in my weekly layouts for a while now, so I hope you already got the idea. I took out my handmade coffee stained paper here for some more vintage feel to the pages. We glued this size as the background, as well as a brown craft paper that we glued on the edge of this page. And for the first time, I'm using black paper for my weekly title. I thought it's better to use this instead of painting the background black since I'm using a white pen to write on top of it. I also printed a book page and ripped some for decoration. Then we will have six white square papers for the daily boxes and I'm using these Suatelier Design Days of the Week stickers I got from Stationery Pile and I love that it matches the colors in this setup. So we're sticking them on top of the boxes and there are also these small gray round shapes that I added beneath them for the dates. Alright, we're gluing some more coffee stained paper on the Dutch door pages but I'll just add the daily boxes later. I wanted to write a scripture below the title but there was not enough space so I decided to write the verse from Jeremiah 33.3 on top of this craft paper instead. And it's something I remember the most in my previous devotional plan. And speaking of devotional plan, it is the next spread we are making. We're cutting this page vertically, which will be for an illustration, but we will get back to it after setting my Into the Word spreads up. I am taking my devotional plans, by the way, from the YouVersion app, in case you don't know yet, and they have various topics available for you. I choose the plan that I like to take depending on my current situation. So for the next one, I chose the topic growing patience. I remember Tina of Tina's Diary using wooden alphabet stamps and white marker to stamp titles in one of her setup videos before. So I thought it would work too using a white gel pen. 
I actually tried it off camera and this was a lot easier than the handwritten one and I'll show you how it's done in a moment. In terms of the layout, we also cut a Dutch door page here. This will be a 4 day plan. We stamp the days as well and gluing vertical shaped coffee stain papers on each page. We're drawing thick lines using this cream color highlighter for the column where I will write the devotional summary. I like to check on the samples of the plans too to see what layout I can incorporate and I saw that there are questions the author asks in the end of the day so I'm writing my answers on the coffee stained paper sections. I want to add a bit of color in this spread so I decided to paint a couple plants on both sides using gouache and again we're just painting them loosely with carefree brush strokes and not thinking about detail. And then we're also adding shadows around here for the final touch. I'm really liking the use of alphabet stamps and white gel pen for the title on this spread and I wanted to keep things uniform so I'm doing the same thing here for the weeklies by covering the one we did earlier. Alright, let's get back to the blank page we skipped before to paint another illustration. I wanted to paint a character and a scene where she is browsing and finding some interesting books. We started painting the bookcase in this perspective where a side is longer on one end and shorter on the other. And then we will paint seven shelves and the colorful book covers. Although my favorite part was painting the books, adding the shadows made the bookcase come to life. Having a reference photo is nice, but a good observation is also important to determine where to apply light and dark colors. Next is the wall with grey, the window with yellow frame and blue reflections, and an indoor plant. We don't want our eyes to focus on this part of the illustration when looking at it so we're not adding too much shadows and details. Moving on to our main subject is our character and of course I need a back pose for this because I am not the best painter for small faces so this makes it achievable for me. We started with her bandana with light pink, curly brunette hair which kind of turned out black in the end because of the shadows, she's wearing her comfy olive green sweater, a brown flowy skirt, and her favorite tote bag. She's also checking out a book which happens to be interesting for her and we're making this scene whimsical by painting the pages yellow and we will add some little sparkles later. I also wanted this illustration next to my devotional spreads to portray how I feel when reading the scripture, like I'm finding all the answers to my questions and acquiring knowledge and wisdom and love from the Father. Okay, I know it's just August, but whenever this month comes, my mind is already onto the sweater weather, even if it's still super hot outside. <laughs> I'm really liking this outfit, and on her tote bag, I decided to paint a yellow flower and write Take Me to the Bookshop. So yeah, there are yellow floating sparkles from the book, and we also painted yellow reflections on her face. 
We're gluing another black paper on top that is like a hanging signage for book genres and we're stamping August on top. So this is how I did it with my white gel pen. I just need to stamp them as fast as I can, otherwise they will dry quickly. The white ink doesn't transfer much on the paper but we're just using the marks as a guide to outline them again and then we'll just add the highlights again and we are done with this illustration. Now let's flip to the last spread we're making for my August setup. We're decorating the edges with this scrapbook style using ripped, coffee stained, and book pages, a thick strip of craft paper, as well as black papers with concave corners for the titles. I'll have this side for my monthly review and a small section for my favorites on the other side. We're going to try a new layout for my monthly review. We're using a peachy watercolor to paint these rectangular boxes where I will write what I'm grateful for, what did I do well, biggest lesson, what I need to improve, and my small wins. For my favorites, we're painting these dark blue thick lines as backgrounds for subsections such as my favorite hobby of the month, favorite passage in the scripture, outdoor activity, food, song, and show, and colored in the writing spaces with a brown highlighter. We're matching the titles with green plants on top too, and then we're painting one more illustration on this empty space. We're painting this small portion of the bookstore front, a display window. So we start with the frame, we have the base layer, and we're adding the shadows and details already. Then we'll have the books on display as well, making them colorful. And next is the black shadows and the book cover detail. We have this bigger space on top and I decided to write once upon a time using a black brush pen, and I'm not sure why I added the white on the lettering this way. But after that, we're also adding some sparkles for a bit of a whimsical effect, as well as the highlights to the shadows, and lastly are the shadows surrounding the whole illustration. Alright, that's everything for this bookstore-inspired theme for my August 2023 bullet journal setup. I hope you enjoyed watching this plan with me video. It took so long to make it, but I love how this setup turned out so much, and I hope you also got some layout ideas for your own monthly setup. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more bullet journaling content from me. Thank you all so much for watching, have a blessed and amazing month of August, and I will talk to you soon in my next video. Bye everyone!